um, our first speaker will be uh, Guillaume Martre. I hope I didn't mispronounce that too heavily. Uh, who's a, an engineer at uh, EPFL, is working on Dotty, and he's going to do some Dotty live hacking. So please welcome Guillaume. Thank you. So in this talk, I'm going to give you a small, short introduction to Dotty, and then we'll go right down to see how the API works in practice. So what's Dotty anyway? So Dotty is a new experimental compiler project started a few years ago, uh, which is starting to be uh, usable as an actual compiler and not just as an experiment. And its main goal to, is to simplify the internals of the compiler, including the type system, but also how we deal with trees. It has a Scala2 compatibility mod, even for by default it will reject some valid Scala2 programs because of some features which have been removed or deprecated. And so we don't have a schedule yet or anything like that, but I'd say that it will take a couple of years until it will be production ready. So tools anyway. Uh, so right now I'm working on incremental compilation support using SBT. Uh, but there's many, many things that needs to be done, and we need many contributors to get them done, like a presentation compiler, or support for writing compiler plugins, and basically all of the tooling around Scala will need to be adapted, I think. Uh, so, uh, by now you should be familiar with that stuff, trees, types, and symbols, <laughs> but uh, let's go over it one more time. So the compiler represents code using trees, and we attach types to those trees because we are typed language and we don't do any kind of transformation on our trees. And in a tree, you might have an identifier which refers to another tree or to something in the class path. And this is referred to using symbols, which are in looked up in a symbol table, which depend on the current scope. And so basically, you can see the compiler has a series of phases. Each one of these phases will simplify the trees and the types of the program until they can be easily expressed in Java bytecode or on with JavaScript. And most of this stuff is immutable or looks immutable. Um, so this is a kind of scary picture of what the compiler actually is. So you can, each block corresponds to a phase of a compiler, and the input here is like the source of your project. And after parsing, after parsing, you have an untyped tree. Then after typer, you have a type tree. And basically, each of these phases is the middle end, the part that will uh, transform these trees and types until you get something that can be generated in the backend into Java bytecode. Anyway, uh, so ha let's have a quick look at the front end. So in the front end, after parsing, you have an untyped tree. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but since you have already seen that in several talks, but uh, the, an ob is a reference to some identifier, and then we select something on it to co make a method call, and then we apply it to some other tree, which in this case is just the literal constant 5. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is the middle end, because that's the part that looks the most like what compiler plugins might look like one day. So in the middle end, we apply transformations to types and trees to simplify them. So one example of a transformation is adding repeated, which takes a repeated argument tick like t star and replace it by a sequence of t. And so this is interesting because this is a type transformation, but this is also a transformation on tree, on the code, because if you have a method which takes repeated arguments, then it needs to be transformed into a method which takes a sequence. Uh, and now I'm going to attempt to do some live coding. And so in this demo, I'm going to implement a very simple phase. And all it's going to do is to try method calls at runtime. 
Okay, so Doty is just an SBT project, and we can so we can just use the run co command of SBT to run code. So our first example will just be some code that has a main method and which prints one and then prints two. So let's try to compile that with Doty and run it. So in SBT, I just launch the compiler of the code. And it's compiling the compiler. And now it's compiling the code. And now let's launch it. One, two. So, so far so good. OK, so how do we add a new phase to the compiler? Uh, I'm not going to show you every details of the compiler uh, arch architecture, but basically, we have compiler.scala. And in this file, there's a bunch of stuff, but there's, most importantly, a list of phases. And that might look familiar from the previous uh, picture. Each one of these phases uh, corresponds to a transformation on trees and types. And they are in list because each one of these lists corresponds to one full transformation of um, the abstract syntax tree. So uh, for our purpose, we can basically put our phase where, wherever we want. So let's put it after picking. And we're going to call it tracer. OK. And now I have prepared a small boilerplate. So the tracer class uh, is just a special kind of phase. And it has a phase name, which will be used for debugging. And so let's start by explaining what we're going to do, because so tree transformations are tricky. And it's very important that we at least explain to the people who are going to read our code what we're actually trying to do before doing it. So what we want to do is to trust method calls. And the way we're going to do that is that any time we have a cause like some method with some arguments. We're going to replace it by a block, which contains a print call. And in this print call, we're going to uh, print the tree of uh, the thing that we're going to call. And then actually do a call and finish the block. OK. So you might wonder why I'm using print and not println. And the reason is that uh, println is overloaded. <laughs> and that makes things slightly more complicated. So I'm going to pretend that println does not exist. All right. So oops. how do we do this? Well. So the, this is a simple thing to do because a method call is just one kind of tree. It's represented in the compiler with an apply tree. Apply takes a function and arguments. So we're going to use the, over the to override transform apply, which lets us take a type tree, a typed apply tree, some implicit context argument which represents the state of the compiler, which is not global, some other argument we don't care about, and the output will be any kind of tree. In our case, it will be a block. OK, so let's start by doing something simple. It just replace our fun args tree by a block. So we're going to make a block. So the syntax for blocks is that block states x is equivalent in code to some statement followed by an expression. So let's just have an empty list of statements and our original tree. And so this, this is actually an, an abstraction. We are not just using a block tree here because under the, the hood, what this is going to do is to make an untyped tree and then type it again based on the type of the expression. But we can skip that. So let's see 
if that works. So let's go back to, to our example. And now we're interested in what's the output of uh, our compiler phase. So the way we do that is that there's a dash xprint argument to the compiler, and you give it the name of the phase that you want to print. So in our case, we have called our phase tracer. So that's what we're going to print. And I'll show you again the code that we are transforming. So this is just a main method with two print statements in an object. And so this is the output. Don't, don't mind the error, it's just because it's on the, on the output, error output. And there's a bunch of noise here that we don't care much about, but you can see that we have two print statements, and they are in a block. All right, so let's go back to what we were trying to do. So we want to make some kind of message, which will be entering followed by our tree. But we don't want to print the raw tree. The raw tree will be something like apply fun and blah, blah, blah. We want to, to give the pretty printed tree because that's much more readable. So we have a show method that just does just that. OK, now we need somehow to create console.print and our arguments. So first thing to do is to get the compiler to give us the type console. And there's a method that does just that. It's called record module. And we give it the full type. And so what's a module? Module just what the compiler calls an object. And we're interested in the object console, not the class console here. And so that's just a type. But what we really want is a tree, because uh, that's uh, we want to have a tree where we call console on some method. So there's a ref method that does just that for us, and which is going to take our type and basically give us a tree that corresponds to it. OK, next step, get the print method. So um, uh, this is pretty simple. We have our console, uh, our console tree. And we're going to select print on it. Uh, but select does not take a, a string. It takes a name, which is a light wrapper around strings. And there's a decorator method that can take a string and correspond transform it into a name. It's a term name because we distinguish between uh, names for terms and names for types. And print is a, ter is a name, is a term and not a type. Well, we are all almost done. We still need to actually call this method with our message. And the way we do this is that we take our console.print and we are going to apply it to some tree which corresponds to our message over here. And this is just uh, a literal string. This is not a var or definition or anything else. And the way we represent this in the compiler is just with a, a type of tree which is called literal, which takes as argument a constant. And the constant that we are going to uh, print is just message. Wow. And now we can finally put inside our block this message. OK. And now we hope that it compiles. It does. So let's see what the output looks like. Again, there's a bunch of noise, but you can see that just before the printer end call, there's the console.print that does exactly what we want to do, which is uh, give us what we're going to call, and the same for the second printer end. So let's see if it actually works. And it does. And I forgot <laughs> the new line, so let's add that. Run the compiler again. 
much better. Okay, uh, I think I have. I'm. I think I'm done. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, are all the calls in the context where you're resolving the names uh, cached or something to make them vaguely efficient, or is it? You're talking about this part where yeah. I resolve the name? Yeah, I cheated a bit here. Uh, in most cases, you want to... I'm not actually sure what kind of caching we do. I think we do a fair amount, but in most cases, you're going to... We have a big definition file, and we put all the stuff that we actually refer to in it, and then we don't need to uh, continuously call a required module or required class. Um, what's your plan on the number of uh, faces? Are you <laughs> trying? Uh, it's like <laughs> I've seen that, that there are uh, more phrases than the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if there is any, any. It's like if there's a number you're trying to reach. I think, I think <laughs> we're at, like, if, you're, if you're getting below some number. <laughs> not. I think we're at about 50, which is like more than twice as much as Kalasi. But uh, so the uh, cool part is that so each each like line in this stuff is a phase, but each block is a complete traversal of the abstract syntax tree. Uh, because uh, the way it works is that some of these phases can be done together using only one traversal of the uh, compiler syntax tree, uh, which means that we can have many phases without affecting performances. And why do you want all these crazy phases? Because it's much better to have a lot of small phases that do one thing than a few phases that do tons of things and no one can debug them. So, uh, for example, I gave the example of um, Elim repeated, which repeats, I don't even know where it is anymore. Oh. Anyway, I gave the, oh, it is here. I gave the example of Elim repeated, which takes uh, repeated arguments and that's like uh, 100 lines of code, including boilerplate. But it's exactly one thing that it's doing, and not 50 things. So it's very easy to debug. Does that answer your question? And uh, yeah, I don't know how many more phases we're going to add, but probably not many because the compiler actually works now. <laughs> so <laughs> we, like, yeah, we keep adding stuff until we end up with something that works, and at this point it works. So the number of traversals will also stay in approximately this region? I think so, yes. Uh, I don't think we're going to make it much smaller because there are really some compli complicated transformation of trees that cannot be done together. And if we're not going to add more stuff, we're not going to add more phases. OK, thank you. Thank you, Guillaume. You're welcome. Please check it out on GitHub, and either you can use it on your in your own project. There's a SBT support and stuff, but it's not documented. Sorry. Okay.